I got some negative feedback on my last video, my last pro prop review video about this prop, the HQ45 blade. Um, the feedback was actually from people that I respect. So I'm making this video as a follow-up to just generally explain my thought process and why I think that that particular blade is not a very good blade. And I hope to make you, make you all armchair engineers like I am. So I do not proclaim to know anything about what I'm talking about. This is purely from experience, purely from observation and testing and trying a lot of different things. So here we go. When I first look at a prop, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this prop as an example. When I first look at this prop, I'm I'm gonna look at it and it looks like it's a very specific shape. It looks like it's been engineered and tailored to a very specific purpose. Already I know that. I, when I look at this prop, it just looks like a funny. It just looks like somebody drew something on a piece of paper, like a diamond. It doesn't mean it's not engineered, not tailored, something like that. But it doesn't it doesn't look like it has the fluid shape that I would think a engineer might want to, the prop to have. That's it. It's just purely, purely my notion. That means really nothing. I don't even know why I said that. Anyways, all right. So as this prop starts spinning, where on the prop will will it first start making thrust? It's a five-inch prop. As the prop starts spinning, the outer edge of the blade is what will first start making thrust because it's moving the fastest. So as it starts spinning, it'll move. The end of the blades will move faster than anything else, and they'll first make start making thrust. When I see a nice thin blade at the end, like a really thin profile, I know that the throttle onset of this prop is gonna be really soft and it might not even be able to do much at low RPMs. It's probably not gonna make a lot of power at the low RPM. <clears throat> but what that also means to me is that as it goes up in speed, as RPM increases, the end of the blades will create, won't create a crazy amount of drag, so the prop will be able to spin faster and it will be able to become more effective at higher RPMs. <clears throat> As I trail down the blade, I see that this has a very, very specific kind of shape to it, and so I'm guessing that it has been engineered to a particular speed, to be most efficient at a particular speed. This is before I talked to the designer of this prop or knew anything about this prop. It has, in fact, been engineered to a speed of about 60 miles per hour. And what that means to me, which I haven't confirmed with him, and I don't even know if this is true, is that at the spin rate required to achieve around 60 miles per hour, the majority of this blade is working all at the same time. So this scoop, this really aggressive, big, meaty scoop, has started to take effect at that RPM. And the whole blade throughout its taper is probably making relatively even thrust throughout, like from the whole back end of the blade. That's what it means to me. The prop is probably going to be very efficient when the whole thing is working together. As you surpass that engineered speed, the prop ends will begin to create more drag because it's beyond the speed that they were intended to fly at. And the middle scoop will take over as well. It'll take over because it's big, meaty, and now it's spinning at the higher RPM that it needs in order to create the thrust that it would create. So the end of the end of the props are creating tons of drag, which you would like to chop off once you get to high RPMs, and the middle of the prop is creating tons of power and grunt, which is what you want. That's how I guess the speed and how it will perform on the throttle. This prop has a very linear throttle, and it doesn't do much at low RPM. It's really geared for one good speed, and then above that, it's just crazy fast. And below that, you lose a little bit of control. When you compare it to this prop, well, let's not even use this prop. Let's look at this prop. When you compare it to this prop, I mean, the end of these props are so blunt and square that these things will start making thrust so soon. Like, they're going to have so much torque and power down low. But once you get up to speed, they're just going to become stupidly inefficient. They're going to just draw crazy amps because the end of the blade is so draggy. It's so the motor doesn't have the torque to be able to manage this thick of an end moving at such speed. Whereas the middle of the blade, which is what should be taking over, isn't really doing that much because it doesn't have much scoop on it. I mean, the scoop on this thing is little—it's kind of small down in the middle, down here in the in the first third. It's a little bit small for you know the kind of blade that it is. All right, so now let's look at the rotational inertia of the blade. That's the next thing I consider heavily. That when I weigh the when I weigh the prop, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the rotational inertia. It doesn't really mean I'm looking at the specific weight because if you look at this prop in particular, all the weight is centered around the middle. Like once you go outside the middle third, the prop becomes very very light. It's probably close to the lightest blade. It's probably not as as good as this blade, but it's probably better than you would expect. These two blades weigh about the same. 
which is surprising because this one has a lot more meat on it. It feels like it's got a lot more meat on it, but they weigh about the same and they're both about the same durability too. That's besides the point. This prop feels super slippery in the air and it feels like you're just not in, for me, it just feels like I'm not in control. It, it doesn't feel like a very good prop. I think the motor has a really hard time spinning this prop. This is the Dahl 4.5 V2 blade, but this prop doesn't feel like that at all. It feels like it has good response. It's because I'm guessing the mass of the prop is in the middle and the rotational inertia of the prop is reasonable. It's not ridiculous. All right, so that's that aspect. That's what, I, that's what I look at for control. If the prop is easy to spin, easy for the motor to manage, it's most likely gonna have really good control feel and the motor's gonna have an easy time spinning it. The thing that I look at for efficiency and noise profile is the end of the prop. And I say that because, okay, so remember back in the day when we were all flying this prop, which was, this is a chopped version, but it's a, it's a six inch prop, six by four or five prop chopped to five inches. I, I, mean, I don't know if you guys remember, but I don't know if you guys were even flying back then, but this is the worst efficiency prop imaginable. These square tips are just terrible. And that was the original tri-blade 4.5 that Dahl made. They made it square tip like this. And if you have been flying that long and you remember, that prop was the, the worst prop, the worst prop made because it was so stupidly inefficient. You couldn't move. It had crazy torque and crazy power down low but it would just, it would destroy your batteries totally. So this is what Dahl did. Not Dahl, Gemfan, I think Gemfan actually was the first to do this. <clears throat> they just curved, I mean, it's this, it's exactly the same blade. This is, this is the same prop. This is a six by four, five HQ blade that has, I think it's HQ blade, that has been squared at the end. There's nothing new or special about this blade aside from the square end. I mean, the, the rounded end. And this made the prop significantly better. I mean, this is a really slight round. This is such a minor curve, but it made the prop way more efficient, it made it tolerable, it made it capable to the point where people still prefer this. A lot of people like this prop a lot. Conrad particularly loves this prop. I think it's a terrible prop. He likes it. It's great. That's another thing to note. All props work. Everything works. Whatever works for you, keep using it. Don't let me tell you it's bad. Don't let anybody tell you it's bad. Anything wrong with it. But let's look at some other things. So these two blades, these, this is the Cyclone blade, this is the Racecraft blade, these are two engineered blades. And you will note that both of them have very interesting prop tips. The tip of these are all sharp and they look like they're curved and they have some artistic qualities to them. Why is that? Well, it's because it's, it's managing the vortexes coming off the end of the blade. So what, what does that even mean? As this prop washes, let's use this one because it's easier to see. As this prop washes through the air when it spins, the air isn't just the, the prop isn't just making thrust blowing straight down. It's it's has a has a force where it's blowing the air away like a, a outer word outer words a cent centrifugal force blowing the the air outwards too. So it's a vortex of air coming not vortex it's a cone of air coming down and away from the prop. So as this blade tip cruises through the air. You not only get air blowing straight into it, so you get high pressure underneath and low pressure on top, but you also get this kind of air washing over the side, washing outwards over it too. When you have a square tip like this, all of that air, the high pressure and the low pressure, wash off the side and meet at the same time all of a sudden, like all of a sudden. It's like jumping in a pool, it just goes whoosh. What that does, it creates a ton of vortex drag at the end of the blade, makes it really hard to spin through the hair air at high RPM, and it just kills the efficiency of the blade in general because you have all this turbulence at the end of the blade that's just not good. When you do things like just, just, curve, just curve the tip a little bit, it doesn't quite all wash off at the same time you get a little bit of distribution of that vortex off the end, and then the vortex trail comes off the tip of it. What Cyclone has done here is that they have they have fully curved this blade end and made it such that the air will wash out, wash out, and all will meet at the end of this, this blade tip together. And the vortex comes off that blade tip, so instead of, you ha instead of having this big square, thick tip waving through the air, you have this little tiny zippy surface, and then all the air as it washes off meets together at this point rather than a big bulbous end. 
Racecraft has taken even more of a highly engineered approach. Like, when I look at this, I'm, I'm looking at this little curve down here, and it looks like the air kind of just sucks into it. It looks like the air would go around it and then suck into this, into this notch. And then all of the air, when it's trailing off the end of this tip, it actually comes together really quickly at the end. So the blade is actually becoming more... So what happens, what happens with, the, with the Cyclone Blade is that they have used a good portion of the blade, like a centimeter of the blade tip, to have better vortex management. Whereas Racecraft has used a much smaller, maybe like five millimeters of, of uh, blade tip for vortex management. So, I mean, I don't know which one is better. I, I have no idea which one is better. But I do know that this prop will probably work more. The more of the prop will work and less of the prop will be used for vortex management. The vortex management on this prop looks like it is probably equal to or better than the Cyclone Blade, but it's just, it's an interesting difference of approach. So when I'm looking at a prop and I see that they have taken the time and effort to do the math or research or whatever necessary in order to manage the inefficient vortexes coming off the end of the blade, I say, okay, great, you know, they've done something about it. Even the old HQ 5x4x3, the blade ends start to taper off and become smaller, they're very small. They're not square, and you can see, if I can find a, cur a curved end that's not broken, you can see that it's smaller than the new 5x4, 5x3 square tip. So, what I did by clipping the ends of this prop was just that. I was just trying to make a surface for the vortex to come off. And what ended up happening was that instead of pulling 140 amps at 75% throttle, I'm pulling a maximum of 127 amps at max throttle. And now this isn't like straightforward thr throttle, this is like backwards in a punch, but the, the effect is the same. I couldn't get these props with these clip tips, which they're still five inches. They're, they're not less than five inches. They're the same, same length. All I did was, was clip the tip right at the corner here. Yes, I did cr change the way the, the, thr the prop is going to work under throttle, under low throttle, but I have increased the efficiency drastically by dealing with the inefficient vortex trail off the end, end of the prop. So when I look at a new prop that some company has made, and the prop shape is just like a weird diamond shape that, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything, but that's just my, my look. I, I see that, okay, so it looks like somebody just kind of drew something and they made it a prop and that's cool. And then I look at the prop tip and I see that they have, they have, they have done nothing to do vor for vortex management. I'm, I'm concerned because I know that everything we fly is inefficient, but I don't want to increase my inefficiency. I want to manage the inefficiency reasonably so that I don't kill my batteries like crazy. So I have been highly anticipating the new Cyclone Blade coming out, and I have seen it, and unfortunately it has the same square tip. But I do understand the idea that there is no perfect prop for any for everything. Like you have to have different props for different purposes. But for the most part, square tips are just not good. I have not seen a square tip prop that's any good, and I really wish that they would just curve the tip and give it some vortex management. They have said otherwise. They've said their engineer, which I, I, I mean, their engineer made the Cyclone Blade, which is a great blade. Uh, they said their engineer says it's a good prop and it, and it works well and it's very efficient. I said, okay, fine. It's 3.7, 3.8 grams, so it might be really, really good. I'm, I'm really hoping it's good. But I think that if they curve the tip, it could take the place of this HQ 5x4x3 blade, which would be awesome because then we would have a low weight, higher pitch, more aggressive, but not terribly higher, uh, less efficient prop to replace this blade with. I love this blade. This is a great blade. It has amazing control. The only problem with it is that it's slow. I just wish it was a little bit faster and it would be like my go-to blade for most things. Similarly, this is something I haven't really talked about this blade because it just it just looks weird. It looks again, it looks like somebody just drew something on paper. I I'd have, I don't know. Maybe this this end does something for the vortex management. Maybe not, but to me it just looks like you have two big square points to to manage rather than uh, one little vortex tip. But whatever. This is a, this is another HQ blade. Um, I don't know why I threw this one here in here. But yeah, that's that's about it. So when I look at a prop, a brand new prop that a company's touting is like amazing, it's great, and I see that they have just they I mean the prop is, is not doesn't look like it's been nicely shaped and properly tapered and it and the scoop doesn't look like that impressive or anything, and then the blade tip looks like it's just square like it's just you can tell when I look at the prop, 
and I don't see these properties that now I understand why they're there and what they do, I'm concerned. I get concerned. So that's why when I looked at this prop, I said, eh, maybe it'll be good, but I, I really doubt it. And I bet it's just not going to work with my high KV and, high, and uh, the amp draw of the batteries. And it's not a bad prop. It's fine. It's very fast. If you're into racing like crazy and just tight little tracks that are, you know, quick throttle punches here and there, and you don't mind flying for one minute or maybe less than one minute, that's fine. It's great. Perfect prop for you. Go for it. But for the most part, I, I don't think it's a very good blade. It, it's just, it's too inefficient to use for really anything. There are better options. The Cyclone Blade, I think, is a better option, even though it has a little bit less control. I think it's a better option because you can fly harder, faster, long, like it's... This prop draws a lot of amps just moving. Just cruising, it draws a lot of amps. The Cyclone Blade and most other props don't do that, don't have that same quality. So it's not that the prop just draws a lot of amps at max throttle, it just draws a lot of amps in general. That's why I don't like it. It flies fine. I have nothing, no problem with it, but I would not recommend it for anybody to use for any purpose. I would way sooner recommend this blade, the Cyclone Blade, I mean the, the Racecraft Blade or the Cyclone Blade over, I would even recommend this prop over that one because this prop draws, I think it draws less amps than the other one and, it, and it's a little bit lighter. This prop is a, like three tenths of a gram lighter. Doesn't mean anything. The other one has better control. This definitely, this one has better control, but this one has more punch to it. And it can generally be tuned if you put it on like a 2207 motor, it has good control, but it needs the motor needs to have some torque to it. But yeah, this is, I still think this is a better prop than the other one. That's it, that's all I'm saying. Goodbye for now. Oh yeah, and another person commented and said, can you please remind us all the floss? Please, for the sake of all things holy, floss every day.